Yeah, guys, so uh, as I'm trying to talk to you, in the background there, Ace is taking a big old pee. So yeah, happy birthday to me, December 4th, 40 years old, and uh, gonna start uh, day one of ground school uh, for a skydiving class, so I'm super stoked. I say everybody should ride a motorcycle, skydive, and do something else crazy at least once in your life. You know, you don't you don't know that you don't like onions or tomatoes until you try it, right? So anything and everything that you can do at least once, I think, is super smart. So I mean, took my I took you skydiving twice for our wedding anniversary, so you're That's still great. on the fence for it, right? But yeah, yeah. My I haven't totally made the decision if I want to get my license to do solo jumps. I kind of think that for right now, tandem is more fun. <laughs> I just like the idea of somebody else having to pull the chute, and I just get to like. Ah! Just I just go it. and enjoy the view and enjoy the adrenaline rush. He's going to have so much fun and I'm going to have yeah, fun watching him learn let's and it's going to be a really good time. So hopefully we can uh, get some good content and good, good information and uh, to you guys just for good content and then inspire you guys to do, go do something crazy or go do some skydiving. So here we go. The first jump course begins with an in-depth gear check with safety as the number one priority. The high energy and hands-on teaching style at Skydive Santa Barbara makes the classroom portion of the study an extremely fun and upbeat experience, and the instructors are extremely passionate about what they do. They truly want each and every student to pass and are willing and eager to answer each and every question. After being fully trained in the workings and safety of the gear, it's time to put on a parachute and do some ground training. This is when you will finally get the chance to go through the steps of skydiving. Every dive has three phases, free fall, the opening of the parachute, and the landing. However, there are a few mandatory steps that you need to go through after jumping out of the plane in order to skydive safely, such as checking your ripcord, keeping a proper arched body position, checking your altimeter at the proper altitude, and finally pulling the ripcord at the correct altitude. Next, the instructor walks the students through all the dangerous situations that may arise upon shoot deployment and how to work through these problems. After practicing a few more times and doing quite a few on the ground jump simulations, complete with a digital altimeter custom designed by Casey, Derek's instructor, it was time for the students to take their final exam. And after passing with flying colors, we were able to schedule Derek's first solo jump. I'm not too nervous. Uh, I'm actually feeling pretty good. I just, I'm kind of going over everything in my mind and I just, I think falling is fine. 
you know, people say, oh, you just fall. Like, well, no, there's actually a technique. Like, you need to be relaxed. Like, everything's right. turning. You know, I need to get, check my altimeter. I need to do uh, my touches um, and my COA, so circle of awareness. So I think I have all that down. Um, actually exiting the plane and getting that, that proper movement so you're not flopping and flying everywhere. Um, it's gonna be cold. Down here, it doesn't feel too bad. I think it's 46 degrees. So up there, it's gonna be a little bit colder. Um, jumping at 13,000 feet. Um, but it's the chute. Like, not opening it, I pretty God, I know that everything's gonna just open fine. I'm gonna look up. It's gonna be all square. We're gonna be good. All my lines are gonna be good. Praise the Lord, that's gonna happen. The thing is, is because I crashed my motorcycle, so I got my hip and my foot and all that kind of stuff, and where we're landing isn't gonna be a really smooth uh, zone. It's kind of bushy and, and, and uneven ground. So we're gonna land in the riverbed, and there is a open-ish area, but that's where, I, that's my concern. So I have, I have my altimeter, you know, or my elevations, a thousand feet. I need to be in one direction at 600 feet. I'm going to make a 90 degree turn and another 300 feet. I need to make that degree of turn, but with the wind and how strong the wind is and where I'm at, like being the first time is like, I need to get those just right because if I flare my chute too early, I'll be so low that I just have to keep it flared because in unflaring it, there's not enough elevation and wind to slow that back down. So then I'll just come to the ground even faster. So. Cause as it is like, I mean, I've only ever, we've both only ever tandem jumped. So when you come in, you come in fast. Come in pretty hot. Like really fast. I'm gonna hit the ground, I'm gonna hit the ground, I'm gonna hit the ground. And then at the last minute it just, Foop, yeah, shoom, and so, then you just land. It's about 20, 30 feet, I think. I need to confirm that. Flaring the chute and coming down for the landing and where I hit the ground is like my biggest, biggest concern. I want to really be aware of my turns, mm -hmm. turning in right, and slowing down and judging the ground. Even as a fabricator, I'm pretty good with dimensions and depth. But when you're up there and you're thinking about the shoot and you have other things on your mind, like to get that perspective just right, that's, and maybe I'm doubting myself, but that's, that's my only slight reservation. So progressive flare, I think is what I want to do. And at the last minute, boom, flare that shoot and then put my feet out and then hopefully come in for a nice smooth landing. So I understand there is kind of a lot of hand signals, like, there's like eight to 10 hand signals that you yeah. need to know. Do yeah. you know them? Good job. So this is just A-OK, -okay. you're doing good. This is extend legs. This is uh, bring back legs or retract legs. Um, this is adjust arms. This is a good one. This is a practice practice pull or practice touch. So you wanna to touch your rip cord. So practice pull, this is, this is actually pull. So that's a really good one to know, like you need to pull. Um, Luckily, you know, so we have, so the elevation. So I'm gonna do, on this jump, I have three practice pulls. That's all I have to do. Instructor's holding on to me, boom. Check altimeter, boom. Check altimeter, boom. I only need to do three. I'm gonna ask him if I could do a couple turns just to do it. And then 6,000 feet, I lock on, locking on, locking on, five, five, boom, pull. Let the shoot go, so. Um, yeah, practice pulls, pulls, and um, relax. And then this is check altimeter or circle of awareness. So pretty much when I'm going, check altimeter, what's, what's my altitude, and then just make sure, you know, there's nobody else around me. And then definitely when you gotta wave off, you know, wave off and, and then pull. So I think I covered it. I don't know, it sounds to me like you're ready. Yeah, I think so. And the last couple tandem ones that I did, um, the instructors were like, dude, you're totally ready. You, you got this, but it's still, still different. It's still different. So I'm excited. Um, I've been waiting for this. I'm now 40 years old. So, and in our very first YouTube or second YouTube video, I think it was the first one. Um, I said by the end of this year, I said I would complete skydiving school, but a lot's happened. So at least I started it. At least ground school is done. And Solo one is today, so.
I don't know. You're going to do great. Yeah. And, and the biggest thing, you guys, like, I'm doing this for me. Uh, this is one thing that I've dreamt about, thought about. It's just one of those stupid, crazy Derek moments that, you know, I've, I've wanted to do. Um, it's not an addiction yet or anything, but it's just like when I see skydivers or base jumpers, it just, it's like watching motorcycles. Like I, I love it. It's a passion. So the reason why we're going to, we're going to, uh, document all of this stuff as best as possible. We're going to make it entertaining, informational and all that kind of stuff is not so we promote you to go skydiving, but maybe that's what you want to do, but to do something that you've been waiting for or thinking about or dreaming about and you just have all these excuses and trust me I know about excuses they're legit excuses for me in this like there's time there's money um, there's just other things that are more important uh, my future um, but there comes a point where it's just like something is gonna have to give something's gonna need to be sacrificed and it's like if I don't do this then I, I don't feel like a failure, but it's just like, I didn't do this and it's really not that hard. So we hope to document this and get it just right where we can influence and motivate you to do something that you want to do. Even if it's just getting out and breaking out of the norm, if, if that's all it is, awesome. But we're hoping that it's something that's scary, that's big, that's gonna be profound, um, that's just, you know, I, I don't know something that's life-changing something an accomplish accomplishment that you can say man I did this at least I did it and I completed it and speaking of completion that's one thing that I feel I have 15 hours of flight time in a helicopter I've flown a helicopter I've done a little bit of motorcycle racing school on a track um, I've done some college like as me as 40 years old I give up like when things get too hard, sometimes I give up. As I get older, I keep pushing through, but I give up. I've never really completed something. I've completed high school, thank God. Um, I've completed, completed the military, but now looking back, I should have stayed in and did a few other things that I wanted to do. But in my heart and in my mind, I've never really like sought after something and completed it. And it just burns inside of me. Like it, it's getting me all emotional right now, but it's just like, Derek, just finish something. Like, once you start something, just finish it. Like, finish it. It doesn't matter how hard it is. Just finish it. And so, that's what I want to portray to you guys um, in what we're doing. And same thing with our rig build and all that kind of stuff and just everything. And that's why it's never lost. Never lost adventure. Because no matter what journey you, you're on, if you think about it, you're never lost. Like that is the journey, that is the adventure that you're on at that point in time, and you're gonna find your way whatever direction that is. Whether it's a simple trail, on-road, off-road, or really your life, your life and, and what's going on. And everything's an adventure, um, good, bad, or ugly, or indifferent. I just, I wanna let you guys know that this is near and dear to my heart. Yes, it's an adrenaline rush. Yes, it's everything that's skydiving, but there's a deeper side of it. Um, in me and I hope that we can portray that to you and the other thing that we found being here is people are super genuine like really really nice like I have never connected with so many different types of people instantly than this place maybe motorcycle riders but like here like they're like hey how's it going blah 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 they talk to my wife it's just like like we knew each other for years and it's just like hey welcome back so to speak so the atmosphere and the, and the people are um a really genuine and and it's it's a cool environment so yeah okay here we go wish me luck lots of prayers um yeah i'm excited <laughs> <laughs>Derek, how does it feel to be doing your first skydive? I'm stoked, I'm stoked. I just want to get the landing right and uh, actually exiting, exiting correct. So canopy is crucial for me. Smart. Whoa.
<laughs> so we're all seat belted in. Yeah. Ready to go. Yeah. Hands up. Nice. Yep, hands up. Patience, patience, patience. Try that two stage flare. Yeah, buddy. Start it. And finish, finish, finish. Even flare. Wow, brilliant.